So we leave that uh, news conference in Sydney. We'll get to our panel, Kerry Chikorovsky and Ben Oquist. Kerry, he's still got a bit of energy there and, and more popular probably than when he lost office in 2007, Mr Howard. Oh, he is extraordinary. There is just no doubt about it. I mean, his energy in this campaign has been amazing. He's been out we, you know, walking the streets with candidates. He's been to fundraisers. He's been addressing rallies. He's been unbelievable. And, you know, I, I would hate to guess how old he is, but I've got a pretty good idea. I just hope that I'm that energetic and that committed when I'm his age because I know he is a Liberal through and through. It's in his bones. He can't help himself, but he loves doing it as well. And he's committed to making sure that Scott Morrison and the Coalition get re-elected. And good on him. Well, he can actually go to some of the seats that Scott Morrison hasn't gone to, Ben, which is interesting. Nonetheless, <laughs> the, the polls have tightened, haven't they, Ben Oquist, in the last few days? They have. I uh, expect them to continue to tighten before Election Day. And it points to the possibility of uh, a minority uh, government. You'd have to say that's as likely as not. It's not guaranteed. Some people still think uh, there can be a, a small Labor majority. But you're right, um, the Prime Minister is not going to a lot of seats, and that's why... That, that dynamic of those teal seats, the seats he can't go to, makes him getting to majority the kind of least likely outcome uh, at this point in the campaign. If you expect the teals to win one, two, three, four seats, uh, it means getting to 76 for the Prime Minister is almost impossible. And I think there are, a lot of there are a lot of important dynamics in this campaign, but undoubtedly a big one has been the difficulty the Coalition has had dealing with its left or progressive flank. And the rise of the teals is a kind of permanent cleavage that presents problems for the government on both climate and integrity. I think they've been a big feature of uh, this election campaign that's kind of set separately to the main contest between the Prime Minister and Albo on things like cost of living and the economy and national security. Kerry, we're seeing this unusual situation at the moment where both leaders seem to have a fair bit of confidence or, or uh, mojo in the, in the final stages of the campaign. Um, Anthony Albanese put in a strong performance, probably his best of the campaign today, the press club. Yeah, I would have called it workmanlike. I think he was actually much more comfortable in that environment where he had questions one at a time being asked of him, Kieran, rather than being you know, in a press pack where they were throwing questions at him um, from all sides of the room. So I think, it, yeah, look, I think it was a workmanlike. I, I saw something which I found about today was, and, you know, he's been very passionate along the lines. You know, he's always, and when he does these set pieces, he's very passionate. I thought he was a little bit flat today, um, mainly because I suspect he's tired. I think, you know, it, it's been a very long campaign. And I think I said to you way back at the beginning that because it's such a long time, uh, keeping the energy levels up would be a challenge for both of them. So a little bit flat, but I think he's probably uh, he's probably cheered by the fact that he had pretty good reception from you and all your colleagues in the uh, in the press club today. Yeah, <clears throat> well, uh, myself, I was in the studio, but uh, the rest of the the colleagues in, certainly in the room. But uh, Kerry, what were your views on the the numbers that uh, Ben alluded to, the tightening of the polls? Are you feeling optimistic for your side of politics? Um, I'm feeling better than I was at the start of the week. Uh, at the start of the week, I thought it was looking pretty doom, you know, doom and gloom. I think it's actually... I always knew it would tighten. I think it's taken a little longer than I thought it would to tighten. Um, I think there would be a level of confidence about, you know, retaining seats at the moment. So the Labor Party have to win seats off us. And I think there's a level of confidence about which ones we can keep, including, I might say, some of the teal seats. I think that when it comes to the crunch, as Mr Howard has just said, I think people walking into that polling booth will be saying to themselves, if I vote Teal, will I be getting Anthony Albanese? Because, you know, with the exception, I think only one Teal um, candidate has said that she'd support a coalition government. So I think the others will be, you know, people will be shaking their heads about the others as to what they would do if it was a, a minority Labor Party, Labor Party government. So, look, you know, I, yeah. I think Ben's right. I think it may be a minority government. Um, keeping my fingers crossed, of course, that it's not, but it might be a minority government. But it'll be interesting mm. to see whether it's the Teals or perhaps the existing uh, crossbench, you know, the Bob Catters of the world, um, who are yeah. going to actually control the numbers in the parliament. Ben, it, it, it's not just the, the Teal threat that you spoke of before. There is also that Palmer effect. And the difference with 2019, Palmer did target shorten directly in the millions of dollars yeah. in ads. This time it's both sides copying it, Ben. Yeah, it is one of the unknowns about what's going to happen to the Palmer vote and where the preferences are going to go. 
ultimately is the decision of the voters, even though Palmer is largely recommending to the coalition side. His preference is split 65-35 to the coalition at the last election. Interestingly, he's making a big tilt at the Senate. Uh, our polling has him consistently up higher in Victoria than elsewhere. And that's one to watch. Just finally, Kieran, I was at the press club today. Just slightly disagree with uh, Kerry. I thought it was the performance of Anthony Albanese's career. He looked on fire. Um, and the key thing that's gone well for him and went well for him again today um, is the bad news on wages growth. And I think that's been the turning point in the campaign. And mm. you're not hearing from the Prime Minister any more attacks on Albanese on his commitment to increase the minimum wage in line with inflation. And whatever happens on the election night, I think the, the battle over real wages rising or not rising and the need to fix it has been settled and either side's going to have to do something about that after the election. Kerry, Ben, thank you both. We'll talk to you after the uh, dust settles.